Hello everyone, welcome back for another book review. Today we are talking about this one. So this is Backyard Garden Witchery, Creating Magical Space Outside Your Door by Laurel Woodward. So this is a book that, once again, I just, it popped up when I was looking at the library, again through the many very specific searches, and so I was like, cool, I'll check it out and see. And honestly, I was pleasantly surprised. A, it's a relatively big book. I didn't think it would be. I thought it was going to be one of the little mini ones that we've been getting a lot of. But no, it's like a legit big book. And it is full of so much information. I absolutely loved this. It was not perfect, so it's a 4 out of 5 star for me. But we'll get to that. But mainly, the big thing that I absolutely loved about this book, first of all, the writing is great. It walks that line perfectly of casual but informative. Again, there's some books that lean too on the casual side. It feels like a podcast. You're sitting down just chatting with somebody, which is fine if that's what you're into. I don't like that style very much when I'm going to an informative book. And then you have the opposite side <laughs> where they're trying to be academic and they're really just trying to like show that they can be smarter than you. And they're like talking at you, not to you. And I don't like that style either. It's a very fine line. Honestly, the majority of authors, especially from like Llewellyn, do quite well for that. I think the editors kind of keep the authors in line and they pick authors that have that tone. I found it very common with them specifically that it just seems to work out pretty well. I'm sure there's some that haven't, but for the most part, I haven't had that issue. But I always like to mention that because, again, just the writing style, I love it. She gives her examples, but also gives you like a lot of random information that's very more mundane, but is so appropriate. Like, again, this is a gardening book, so there's a lot on how to garden that isn't just witchcraft, which when you're doing any topic where you're including random topic plus witchcraft, I think you still need to cover the initial topic plus the witchcraft side of it. And like, some books do not manage that well at all, but this one really did. She talks so much about figuring out like what type of soil you have, what your, I think it's like the hardiness or something area, basically how cold you get <laughs> and like what's gonna grow there and like the different climates and stuff. Obviously it's gonna be mostly US based, but you could kind of figure that out wherever you are. I'm pretty sure it exists everywhere, but this is so good. Like my favorite part of this book was at the end in part two where she goes over like all the different things. <laughs> so you've got shrubs, flowers, you've got gardening stuff. So you've got like your herbs, but also like your veggies. And like there was so much in there that was like common stuff. Cause so often a lot of these witchy books have like really random stuff that you're like, cool, but like not appropriate for like where I live and it's not really common and it's like you've got to go to a store to get it. There are a few of those that are not like easily found, but there's a lot more that are. For example, like the veggie section, there's been so many times I've tried to do kitchen witchery and I have gold in my books and it's not listed and you're like, <sighs> I can't remember like some of them and like this doesn't have a lot of fruit, which is a bummer, but then I looked at the back of the book and it has this little thing. And it's like, hey, did you know that she has a book on kitchen witchery? So now I gotta go find that book. <laughs> because I was like, this is so good. Like, first of all, this one talks about, like, in each of those, like, for example, like, how to, like, how to, like, grow broccoli and, like, the gardening side of that. And then also, like, history and then magical uses. And every single one had that. It was so good. Like, that section alone, like, part two, where we're going through flowers, and not just, like, really random ones, too, but it also talks about, like, sunflowers, honeysuckle, daisies, roses. Like, there are just so many that we see all the time when you go to, like, the nurseries and stuff, especially now where it's, like, finally warm. Like, it's so many of these plants that we have around that she talks about in here. And again, it's care plus magic, and I absolutely love that. The downsides of this book, there's not a whole lot. There was just two spells kind of back to back, I think. It was like, I think it was like page 86 and 90 or something like that, or maybe 89 and 90. But there were just two that was like consent, free will, let's just toss that right out the window. And when I read that, it immediately knocked a star off of it because otherwise it was going to be a five out of five. And then it was like, mm, nope 
cannot support that. So I looked it up. Page 86. Spell to draw the love of the one you desire. Yes, it's for a specific person. So let's just throw consent right out the window. And then on page 90, there's apple blossom compulsion spell. Also consent just thrown right out the damn window. So I don't love that. Anytime a book is going to do something along those lines, immediately I'm just like, mm, no. Like, I have issues even doing like healing spells on people when you haven't, like on any kind of consent. If they're actively asking for prayers and positive thoughts, to me, spell work would be included in that. The, it, a spell and a prayer in a lot of instances are gonna be pretty much the same. You're asking for other forces to intervene. And so a spell is just another way of doing that. And so for me, like that's a fine time. They've already asked for outside help, but if they haven't, don't do that. And let alone these where you're like, okay, that's all the flags are flying and they're all red. <laughs> like it was not good. Other thing is that there was no conclusion. And it's a little pet peeve of mine, but progressively it just gets more annoying every time. I don't know why books are skipping a conclusion. It's so weird. Why not just conclude the book? Because you'll just be reading along, doing your thing, and then suddenly you're like, and we're at the end, I guess. Because it's like the bibliography or the acknowledgements or the index, and you're like, oh, okay, I guess we're done with this journey together, okay? Like, it's just a little thing, but like, give me my conclusion. Give me that little bit of a goodbye <laughs> from this journey we've taken together through all of these pages. It's a little thing but it does bother me when authors don't have that. And I know it's like, honestly, like pretty common. I don't know if I would say it's 50-50, but like there are so many books that don't have a conclusion and there are a lot that do. So like out of the many books that I've already talked about, I mean, I haven't kept track of every single one that doesn't have a conclusion. I'm sure I've mentioned it <laughs> pretty much every time because it bothers me. But like, I just, why, why can't we have a goodbye? Just. Just a quick little thing, just a little thing. But other than that, this book was really good. I do plan to go buy this book at some point. I have a running list of books that I've gotten from the library that I plan to go buy because they're just good resources. This is one that if you can get a hold of and you're into gardening and or kitchen witchery, I feel like there's enough here, especially again in part two, that could easily just transfer into kitchen witchery. Again, if you're working with oregano, like most of us have that in our cabinets, and there's spell work and ways to use it there alongside if you wanted to grow it. Like there's just so much info and I'm really curious about her kitchen witchery book. I hope the library has a copy. Otherwise it's just gonna be on my to be bought list eventually. But yeah, I would love to hear your thoughts on this one in the comments down below. Huge thank you to my patrons. I'll have their names here on the screen if you'd like to support me and get access to exclusive content. It is patreon.com slash nightwillowcrafts. Make sure to like and subscribe. I post every single day. And until next time, thank you so much for watching and bless be.